your Bible this morning, we're going to turn to the book of Luke, chapter number 15. <clears throat> Luke chapter number 15. We're going to begin reading in verse number 1. <clears throat> Bear with me now. I'm going to read several verses of Scripture for Father our message this morning. <clears throat> Luke chapter 15, verse 1. Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. He spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, Doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it. And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his uh, friends, neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Even the woman having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth uh, not light a candle, and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she had found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that we can. Father, we ask you to bless the reading of your word. Speak to our hearts this morning. We love you and thank you so much for loving us and sending your son to search us out through the person of the Holy Spirit to bring us to yourself and save us. Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning, as we take a look at these few verses of scripture, I want to title this morning, Seeking That Which Is Lost. Seeking That Which Is Lost. <clears throat> I know, according to scripture, that's the mandate of the church of God, of the children of God, is to reach out and to try to find that lost sheep and bring it to Christ. So as we look at this this morning and think about it, I want you to think about uh, this first verse in verse 15. It says, Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear. Jesus did not have a problem drawing a crowd. <laughs> you read the scripture, you'll find out everywhere he went, there was a crowd around him. And every crowd that there was there, he met the needs of their life. If they were hungry, thirsty, or whatever was going on, they might need to be healed of some sickness or disease, or delivered from some demon spirit. But Jesus was there to accommodate the needs of the people. And that is a blessing as I stop and think about it. I think about uh, even there in chapter 14, verse 25. Just the first part of it says, And there uh, were, uh, went great multitudes with him. And he turned and said unto them, He was always willing and ready to have a word, to speak, to encourage, to help, and meet needs in their lives. So as we look at this particular portion of the scripture, and look at what was going on, we find out that the Bible says, Right in that first verse, 
then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. Let me tell you something. Everybody outside of the Jewish religion was a sinner. <laughs> if they were not orthodox, if they were not following the rules and the regulations that was produced by their religion, they were sinners. Amen. And uh, so I, I saw the thought about and the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man received the sinners, and he eats with them. He eateth with them. What about this guy? They were the they were the religious judges. <laughs> Amen. They censored everything that went on in the house of God and outside the house of God and determined whether it fit in to their way or not. You stop to think about those first two groups, the publicans and sinners. Who were they? Who were they? Who were those publicans? Well, they look, they're the ones who was hired and they sit at the receipt of customs and they took up collections and money to be given to the Roman government. So everybody hated that crap. <laughs> Give them money, amen? amen. Give it to those ones who have authority and power over them. And then the sinners, they're just those ones that just live a very wicked life. And the Bible says that's the ones that crowded around Jesus. Amen. amen. <laughs> they were looking for somebody with a tender voice. They were looking for somebody with a compassionate heart. Uh -huh. They were looking for somebody that wouldn't be putting them down, but that could help them and meet needs in their life. Here comes the religious crowd, the Pharisees and Sadducees, murmuring, saying all kinds of things. But this guy, he receives sinners, amen? So we have a little multi, we ended up a mixed multitude, amen? You've heard of them before, haven't you? A mixed multitude. Well, they're always there. And I thought about, I thought about that, those Pharisees. Do you know one of the disciples that was a Pharisee? Do you remember that? Let me turn over here and read this for you. <clears throat> the Bible tells us over here in the book of Luke, in chapter number 5, <clears throat> the Bible says in verse 27, After these things he went forth, that is Jesus, and he saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. And he left off, rose up, and followed him. And the Levi made him a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans, of others that sat down with them. Here's them scribes and Pharisees. And they murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? Do you know who Levi was? Levi was Luke. <laughs> he became a, a, an apostle of Jesus Christ and followed him. And he was a public. He was a tax collector. Well, we know about a whole bunch of them that was fishermen, don't we? And they left their nets in their boats. And they followed Jesus. Amen. Jesus picked them up wherever he wanted to pick them up. Amen. And they became good followers of the Son of God. And they understood what he was trying to get out to them. But as I thought of, I, I read those two verses and I thought, man, I could preach a whole message on them first two, but I won't. But the Bible says, knowing the hearts of these Pharisees and Sadducees and hearing them murmur and grumble and gripe about everybody who was there, Jesus thought he'd speak a little parable to them. Verse 3, he started out. He says, and he spake a parable unto them, saying, What man of you, if you have a hundred sheep, if you if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? I thought about a lot of things. I uh, spent quite a bit of time my ministry out among the Navajo people 
all over the all over nation and had opportunity to be around those who had sheep, shepherds. Uh, even over in Arizona, I got to be witness of them killing one and fixing it up and cooking it on the outside pitch from where they were put and uh, all the stuff that went on. I ain't got time to tell you all that. But listen, they live just a little bit south of a state called Colorado. Colorado had wolves, mountain lions, and they had all kinds of, of enemies of sheep. But you know what? Those lambos never worried about it. They had sheep dogs. They didn't have one too. They had a little herd of them. I'll see them. Amen. But them sheep knew their master and they knew the dogs. They didn't worry. They could just eat, just go on. The dogs would watch for them. Amen. Take uh -huh. care of them. So I thought about this little parable that he gave to these Pharisees and Sadducees about the man who uh, lost his sheep. And uh, he had 99. And the Bible says that he didn't, uh, he didn't take them back to town. He didn't take them where there was a pen. The Bible says he just left them in the wilderness. Now he said, uh, doth not leave the 99 uh, in the wilderness. And he goes uh, after that one which was lost. Now why would a guy do that? Leave 99 of them out there vulnerable to all kinds of stuff, all kinds of enemies. Well, I believe Jesus has said, well, in this particular parable, they had a whole band of angels watching over them. Because what I'm talking about, people. He, he really has been using the, the sheep and the shepherd and all that as an illustration, a parable. And I thought about it. I thought about, you know what? This man. He left the 90 and 9 to his sheep dogs. I'm going to have to go find that one. You dogs take care of my sheep until I get back. You, you will never know, unless you spend some time on an animal reservation, seeing how that shepherd and them dogs work together. And they know his voice, and all he has to do is holler their name. They throw them heads up. I've watched them out from that reservation. Boy, he can point. He can do some things and they, they will run to see what's going on over there. Unbelievable. This one preacher was out there uh, with me one time. The sheep was coming in to be fed at night. The dogs had brought them in. And, and the shepherd, the man that was the preacher, was going to walk around and feed them, but he stopped to do something else and, and he had to go out and open up the gate for them. So this preacher said, I'll get the gate. He run out there and buddy, he, was, he didn't know how to call them. He started, he said, come on, little sheep. He's, man, when he spoke, them sheep, dogs, and everything made a run for the pasture. I learned a few things about sheep and shepherds, amen? And, and so I, I thought about this, and I thought about this man. He's leaving the 99 in the wilderness. We ain't worried about them. They'll be taken care of. But what did he have to face? Listen, I got to think of it. I, I just jotted down a few things that come to my mind. I got jotted down the fact that once he took off and went to looking for that one, he, he, he had to cross some little hills. I mean, you get out there in that desert, you might think it's flat, but there's not. There's gullies, there's creeks, there's little rivers out there. And so he, 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 had, to, he had to go hunt that sheep, and he scored over the hill, down in the middle of the <coughs> Then he comes up, and then he goes across the dry place, has to go through the little creek, has to do all that kind of stuff. And I got to really thinking about, I thought about the, the, uh, Commitment that that man had to one sheep. And, and he's given this illustration so that they can get in mind what God thinks about one lost sinner. He not only went through the, over the hills, through the little rivers, up through the dry places and the brush and stuff like that, but you know what he had to watch out for in that desert? He had to watch out for rattlesnakes. Amen. Now they're out there. He not only had to do that, but he had to watch and make sure, I'm sure he brought another dog or two with him, but he had to make sure that a mountain lion had it right. down overnight and come out of, out of Colorado. They probably even lived down in that northern part of New Mexico. Maybe a wolf. He faced the elements of, of life and weather as well as the, 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 
obstructions and, and the live animals and stuff like that. Yes. But you know what he was willing to do? He was willing to face them, hazard his life to find that one sheep. Amen. And the Bible says when he got that sheep found, he didn't whoop the sheep and kick it around and say, what are you doing running her off? No. He lovingly and caringly picked it up and wrapped it around his shoulders. Yeah. Next to his heart. He had love for that sheep. Greater love hath no man than this. That a man would lay down his life. That's what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. Amen. For That's you right. and I. Uh -huh. Oh yeah. Through the preaching of the word of God. Through the work of the Holy Spirit. He drew you to himself. And found you. And he pulls you up next to his heart. Up next to who he is. And shows you that he was willing to give all. That you might come to know him. And walk with him. And be assured of safety. Of no matter what the enemy might be out here. And folks, I'm going to tell you something. If you and I had any idea what we face every day that you cannot see. Called evil spirits and demons. You'd be scared to death. You're looking at it like you don't believe that. You need to read the word of God. Jesus Christ. And went through the baptismal waters, got his commission from Almighty God, and went up into the desert. And the first thing he done is met the devil. Amen. You get busy to serve God, you give your heart and life to Jesus Christ, and want to live a life that's pure, a life that's honest, a life that will exalt the Savior. And I'll tell you what you do: you will meet with your enemy. Yes, that's right. He'll be there. Amen. He's already there. He's just waiting for an opportunity. So I, I thought about this man as he went out. He didn't know what he was going to face. He didn't know what he might have to run up against. He might, he might have to dodge a rattlesnake. I lived on Red Hill. And I'm going to tell you what. You, you didn't go out there and go run around through the bush, bushes out there. You kept your eyes open. We had rattlesnakes galore. I've been going down the trail pretty good little deal there and had a cousin with me and I was going to let him go first. He was living in Oklahoma City and I was trying to be kind. So he and I grabbed a little old limb and pushed it back so that it was starting to lean out over the little trail. And when I pushed it back, right there was a diamond bank rattlesnake. So I grabbed him and arm up and I shoved him back. I said, can't go across that right now. Amen. I never went to the woods haphazard. I never did go, not looking to see which way I was walking. You do, you get bit by a rattlesnake. We had, we had the, at the, at the river, at the creeks and the ponds, we had water ponds. But on, on dry land, we had rattlesnakes. So this out We had coyotes. When I was just a small boy, I wasn't very old, I can't remember, I might have been 12. We even had some wolves still out in, in that area. You may have never heard of a wolf no more. We had wolves out there. They weren't just coyotes. I had an opportunity at a real young age to shoot one. I thought it was a coyote. I didn't know. But I knew it was awful big. I shot that thing with a 22. And I, I didn't even, I just went and looked to see if he was still laying there. I went and got my daddy. Amen. And I told myself, I shot a coyote. And he was kind of surprised. I didn't go nowhere, just about about my gun. I got up there and looked at it and said, son, you ain't killed a guy. That's a wolf. Years and years later, hunting up our deer hunting as a grown man, I've heard the wolves howl up there on Red Hill. I don't know whether he's still there or not. But listen, Jesus has given us an illustration here of a man who went to find one sheep. And he put it on his shoulders. And the Bible says down here in verse 5, and when he had found it, he laid it on his shoulders, plural, rejoicing. 
It's still alive. I found him. It isn't her. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and his neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me. I have found my sheep which was lost. Amen. Excited about the fact that he was all right. Yeah. He wasn't wounded. He wasn't hurt. Yeah. And I've got him with me. He said all of that to bring a real message across to the people that he was talking with that day. Listen, folks, we've got a Savior today. That's what right. Is he, what does he in, want to do for you and I? The Bible tells us here in the book of Luke, chapter number 19, verse number 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Amen. Amen. That lamb was lost to him, but he went out. Jesus came and, and, and put his life on the line to seek and to save those who were lost in his day. He tabernacled with them. He healed them. He fed them. He prayed over them. He done all that he could do to those who were willing to come before him. Folks, he left a multitude of people around Israel that believed that he was the Messiah. But you know what? He had to deal with that group of <laughs> I start to say Christians, but <laughs> no. They were Judaizers. They were Religious folk. But he had to deal with them. But look, look down here at this verse number seven. Here's he gives them this parable. He gives us this example of how important it is to go out to find the lost. And he says in verse seven, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. More than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. There's going to be more excitement in heaven over one lost soul that comes to Jesus Christ and confesses their sins, confesses their need of salvation, and receives Him into their life as Savior and Lord. I, I can imagine. Can you imagine in your wildest mind what goes on in heaven every time a sinner gets saved? receives the Son of God, receives the Savior that God sent down here to be for all humanity. Man, I, I can't imagine the, the choir of angels that sing and the rejoicing of the people. One more that will not spend an eternity in hell. One more that Satan doesn't have a grip upon. One more that's free and liberty in his life to come to heaven when he dies. Amen. God, I'll tell you what, he's telling this little story, this parable, and then in seven, he kind of unfolds it for them. There is joy in heaven. Amen. Man, can you imagine what's going on up there? Not just for the angels, but there's a lot of Christians that have already made it up too. Amen? That's right. What are they doing? Amen. You said, can they see us? I ain't been there yet. I'll tell you what. They said joy is in heaven. Amen. I wonder sometimes if a father or mother that has slid on out of here and, and uh, gone to heaven and looked down and see a son or a daughter or a grandchild come and receive Jesus Christ, if they're not left there with angels rejoicing because one of their own will soon come home. I don't know what's going on up there. I don't, you don't either. But I'm going to give us a little real clear sight on this thing that the Bible said there's some rejoicing. So, <laughs> likewise, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner at the time. Don't have to be a bunch of them. Just one. Just one. One person who had, was lost and had gone astray. There's more rejoicing over them than there is 99 of us that don't have that problem. God help us today. Look quickly at the next little parable. The Bible says in verse number 8, He said, Either what woman, having ten pieces of silver, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle, sweep the house, 
seek diligently till she find him. And when she hath found him, she calleth her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, I have found the peace which I lost. Isn't that something? So he gives this other parable, and I'm thinking about it. The Bible gives us a pretty good little illustration here of the fact that she uh, she she lights a candle. She ain't got electricity, amen. She can't have a spotlight. But she lights a candle. She gets some light in there that she can move from room to room, from place to place. And I got to thinking about that. She she probably was looking at the corners behind the doors, <laughs> probably looking under the chairs and tables. She was looking everywhere. She even swept the floor. I don't know how dirty it was. She might have had a dirt floor for all I know. But she swept the floor. She cleaned up. Probably went all the way into where her bed was situated and looked under the bed and threw back the cover. And she was just frantic. I lost that coin. Pretty important to her. Amen. Amen. Uh, it probably take at least a hundred dollar bill to get us to get that excited. <laughs> <laughs> If we lost a hundred dollar bill, we'd probably be. Well, it's got to be in the house because I was looking at it a while ago. I don't know what the world happened to that thing. <laughs> Anyhow, I don't know where it's at. But there's one thing we know from the scripture. I mean, she she lit the candle, she swept the floor, she look at that little phrase and seek diligently. She didn't just kind of look around and say, well, I don't see it anywhere. Oh, no, no, no. She was down on her knees looking under stuff. She got down close to where it possibly could be. Yeah. And the Bible says, till she found it. And she wasn't going to let that coin, I, I don't know. Silver, maybe pretty worth quite a bit of money, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. Piece of silver. That'd be worth us a lot of day to today, amen. Yeah. You can't even find a coin in America made for silver anymore. That's right. <laughs> Maybe got some other cheap junk, amen. Yeah. And this cheap too, you've got to have a bunch of them to buy anything. That's right. <laughs> this woman had a coin that was very expensive in her day. Yeah. And she searched and searched. And when she found it, can you imagine? Uh, probably lived in a kind of community thing, and there's quite a few people living around. And she went out and found, the Bible says, and when she had found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together saying, Rejoice with me. I want you to get happy as I'm not happy. Amen. <laughs> and the poor folks, amen. Amen. Much as can tell you. Amen. <laughs> I remember back when they were out of town, we said we were so poor we couldn't even pay attention. <laughs> I mean, we were in bad shape. But, uh, Everybody was poor. And man, she said, I want you to come and rejoice with me. And they was probably rejoicing. She said, well, I have found the peace which I have lost. Isn't that something? I'm excited about that. Then Jesus finishes up this little parable and this little story with another, number seven, seven, likewise, verse 10. Likewise, likewise. I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. Mm -hmm. I know some people probably say, well, we had a Bible. We did have one saved. That's all. Well, hey, rejoice about it. That's and right. So they're rejoicing in heaven. Amen. My Amen. goodness, we are rejoiced. Well, oh, so and so, man, he's been in church for about six years. And I don't know if he's going to ever get around with it. His life's been kind of a mess, but he come back and he rededicated his life. Amen. As far as I'm concerned, we ought to be rejoicing on That's that. That's right. That's one that just got saved. Amen. Amen. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. We as God's people down here need to really take a look at life and look at things. We know somebody that's lost, somebody that's not saved. We don't need to go around them. Uh, the block a different direction. We don't need to bypass their house only looking straight ahead. We ought to start praying for them. We ought to start maybe visiting with them. I know COVID shut us out on everything. But listen, we need to get back to business. 
We are. We know the name. We're to start bringing their name before the throne of God and pleading with God to send the Holy Spirit. That's we right. Can't get there. Send the Spirit of God That's by. Right. Let them see us drive by every Sunday morning, Amen. and they already know you're a Christian. They'll say, "Now let's be going to church." Amen. 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 We need to do that. We really do, because the Bible says those in heaven are rejoicing. Amen. Over one sinner that needs you. I saw. God help us today as we take a look at this thing. Think about it. We have a Savior. The Bible tells us, I done read it there a while ago, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. That's right. <clears throat> Think about another verse over here in 5 and 32. Jesus said, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners Amen. to repentance. That's right. Jesus came to reach out to those who know him not. Uh -huh. To those that are spiritually lost. That's a sinner. And we don't look down on them. We see somebody who needs to be helped. Somebody who needs to be loved. Somebody that needs us to go to them and see what we can do to help. Amen? We do do. God help us to reach out. I don't know about you, but man, I... I've preached in many places on our reservations to many different tribes. But I'll tell you what, I've seen some come, and uh, even the people there were weeping and rejoicing. Yes. Because that individual was a terror. In their age. And now he's asking me. Yeah. Well, well, if they're rejoicing, what's going on in heaven? Yeah. The angels are heaven are rejoicing over that one person. Amen. I can tell you about a man from Pine Ridge who was an alcoholic, mean, and everybody stepped aside when he walked in. Even his family, when he would come home, his wife told my wife, she said when he would come home, after we had gone in there to him, he'd come up on the front porch, come in the house, and then the kids would go out the back door and go to the family and stay until we he came for us to come home. He was so mean. Well, I saw him in a meeting in Pine Ridge, South Dakota. The missionary there, y'all <coughs> oh, would know him. Names skips my mind right now. Can't even think of it. But uh, Brother Harold, Harold yeah. Piney, yeah. who was pastoring up there. And Harold told me, he said, Preacher, anybody would have never got saved. I would figure it would be him. He was a terror on his reservation. And to his family. <clears throat> and his wife told my wife. We go back, we would, I went for every year for years to preach on that reservation. And she told my wife, her name was Mary Bell. She said, you didn't know They came to Falls Creek. Harold brought her to Falls Creek. He's friendly and serving bills and happy. And they said, couldn't believe it. They had never seen a bunch of Indians from all different tribes, different reservations. They false creed. They just blew them away. Yeah. <clears throat> they stayed in the church until I don't know what happened to him, but I know his wife died. She was a bad diabetic. I guess he did too. They weren't young. Folks, I'm telling you something. Reach a lost person and see the change in their life. Mark called us to rejoice. Amen. Amen. Rejoice. God help us and bless us. God bless you this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you so much for having us. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your word. Thank you for what you have done in our lives, Lord. You've brought us in our own ways. And we thank you for it. Now, Father, we can pray for our community. And if there's anyone here we know that is not lost, saved, that we might have opportunity to witness to and talk to you, Lord. Give us the grace to do that. Lord, that we might see them found. See them saved. Lord, we praise you and thank you for each one that's here in this morning. You speak to our hearts. We'll praise you for what you do in Jesus' name.